Hey everybody, Jay Burino here. Welcome back. We're playing Heart of the Swarm Protoss Edition. And we're on to the Crucible. It's the defense mission. Commentary for this one's going to be strange because I recorded this one and due to an OBS update, uh, it wasn't capturing my microphone input. Uh, I could have just replayed it, but I don't know. It's late. And it would have taken the same amount of time if I'd have just replayed it, but then I would have, to be, I would have had to... Not pretend as if I hadn't played it, but it just, it's, I don't know, to me it's just like almost boring to have to replay it, and it's, now I could just focus on the commentary a little bit more. Um, you know, I'll talk a little bit about what past me chose to do with strategy here, and then we can, we can riff a little bit. Um, I was deciding which, uh, Cloaked Warrior to go for. DTs on this mission would be incredible, just killing the vast amounts of ground units, but I thought the Avengers could be good just to change it up. And also, um, killing the Tyrannosaur, because we don't have, like, a Mutalisk equivalent. That is an air unit that we can fly down there to kill it. And it's not liftable by Phoenix, because it's massive. So I figured, if we need to use ground units, we can use the Avengers. They'll go down there, they'll get killed by it. Um, but they'll then, they'll get teleported right back to the Dark Shrine. So overall, that is probably really just for that bonus objective, which you'll see may or may not really be considered worth it. Um, the ranged warrior is not super duper important either. I think dragoons, because we don't have to rely on mobility, we could just camp them behind cannons and they can provide some decent DPS if we make them at all. Spinny zealots, lots of weak ground units. It's going to be fine. If we had guardian shell, it'd be even better. Uh, apparently past me didn't even realize there were starfighters down there. And then here I was deciding between warp and reinforcements or solar lance, because if you take both, they're both 75 energy hogs. So I, uh, I said, let's go Solar Lance this time, because I, I actually rarely used it even throughout Wings of Liberty, and then downgraded to Chrono Surge, which isn't really even a downgrade, because it's very, very good. And then Phoenix, I think we start with three of them on this mission, but otherwise it didn't really matter that much. You have come to this place seeking power. Yes, but there are still many questions. The power is more ancient even than I. It comes at great cost. What will you sacrifice to have your revenge? I will do everything in my power to survive this war. You must feel the power. It calls to you. Go to it. The enemy approaches. Remain vigilant. We serve at your command! Let us proceed. Ironic how I was checking my in-game sound to make sure it was loud enough, but no, <laughs> not realizing that my microphone wasn't being Ready captured. Warriors. Clear. Ah, just the stupid problems of the making video content ours. sometimes, you know? Apparently past me was also scared, but there we go. Artanis doesn't have lightning dash, so I, um... Yo, look at that hot micro. New age of Jay Barino pulling that well zealot out. My warriors. A bold that was good stuff. They all got to live. I serve my people. You are close. The moment draws near. Is your hate still strong enough to make the necessary sacrifice? Can be no doubt. There can be no doubt. Perfect. What is it you have found? The first spawning pool. It existed before names. From this primordial place, the Zerg arose. Within, one essence split into many. One devoured another and became stronger. The first Zerg. yourself. Evolve. Transform. Transcend. Move carefully, Hierarch. You are right. The way forward may be difficult, but it is necessary. Until then, we must defend it from the Zerg. As you command, Hierarch. What do you mean, we? Artanis, you mean you, we, uh, the rest of us, you just get to hang out in there. 
So we get monoliths this time. We got to start with three Phoenix, which is really nice. I want to take that expansion to the right really early. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about, you know, what's going on. The Nerezim have long used Kaderan monoliths to protect our lands. I see your face myth has become familiar with them. Indeed, Matriarch. The monoliths are quite deadly and fire a considerable distance. They should prove instrumental in our defense. I'll be honest, I don't really like monoliths. They take too long to shoot. The attack delay is too long, such that by the time they actually are ready to shoot the projectile, whatever they were going to kill is almost always already dead. Circling bioforms on approach to our nexus. We must rally our defenses. So I tend to make them, but only after a lot of other self-sufficient defenses set up. And they're, they're good for killing things that can outrange them, which there isn't that much that can. Um, I don't know how they fare against siege tanks in terms of range. I've never really checked, but maybe you all can fill me in in the comments. Um, just went for that early dark shrine, and uh, it's all going to work out. And um, first, the first attacks on this map are always scary, you know, going for greed economically. But if you can survive these first attacks, I'm looking to um, chrono surge out a bunch of probes to saturate the second base. Again, you can get 12 probes with one chrono surge if you have enough money to do it. Uh, losing this first monolith early hurts, though. Those are very expensive. So, again, I don't really like to build more of them, but losing the ones that pre that is pre-placed is, is killer. It sucks, but it's fine. We persevere. I'm saving up to, to Chrono Surge out that expansion, and again, start getting those Avengers, which, honestly, I think just going straight DTs would still be better, even though you'd lose a bunch to the Tyrannosaur. You could also build other units to go kill the Tyrannosaur, but... I would, uh, I would say the Avengers worked out just fine, and uh, when the Tyrannosaur pops out, it's all gonna, it's all gonna work out. We got some cannons that are deep power for some reason. How am I doing? Thank you so much for asking, Strawman Commenter. I appreciate you checking in on me. But uh, here comes the the Chrono Surge. We'll shift your focus to that, and I think I perfectly get exactly 12 probes out. But anyway, I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm a little tired from the week. Uh, it's just, I, I'm getting old, man. I'm getting old. I feel like if I, if I miss one night of sleep, not, well, I'm not missing the whole night of sleep, but, like, if I have one bad night of sleep, it just completely ruins, like, the next two full days. <laughs> like, I, I once hurt my, my back a little bit getting into bed. It's, it's bad news. But uh, one thing that was earlier th this week, as of recording this, were the uh, the midterms in the in the U.S. for the federal legislature. Well, there were a bunch of down ballot races too. But I was a uh, I was a poll worker for the first time for my county, and um, I would really recommend it to folks who want to get you know more involved at like a local politics level. And one thing I will always say is uh, your local politics affect your life more than federal and state, um, but they generally have the lowest voter turnout. So if you're really disillusioned with federal politics and geopolitics and stuff like that, if you have the luxury um, to be able to focus more on local stuff, right, and uh, you don't have stuff that's going on that's making your life actively a living hell, I would uh, I'd recommend looking into local politics. It's a lot more rewarding. But, that being said, it was like a 16 and a half hour day. So to tie this into the whole Jay Marino's getting old, this was like five days ago I did this, and I'm still just like dead. I'm beat. <laughs> it just like, it put me out of commission for like the whole week in terms of energy. <laughs> um, you know, I had to be there super duper early, and then we didn't leave till like 9.30. So, uh, yeah, so we had to, we were there at 5 in the morning, which is, you know, I think I got up I got up around 4 a.m., which is probably the earliest I've ever willingly gotten up for anything. You know, I wake up in the middle of the night all the time, but I've never purposefully set an alarm for 4 a.m. to get up and go and do something. Uh, <laughs> wacky stuff. But again, it's just like, it like completely destroyed the rest of my week. Yeah, I, I think I'm still gonna do it again next year, though. Again, it's 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 long, but it and it tired me out, but it just feels it just felt more rewarding for me. And um, I feel like a lot of counties always could use people to work these, especially non-presidential elections, where again there's lower turnout, but also fewer people who are willing to do the the election work. 
And, um... Yeah, I think we had a pretty good turnout this year, and, uh... I don't know. All I can all I can say is, on our way out, our our chief officer that year said, like, hey, you should tell people to, to try doing this. Um, also, in many places, you will get paid. Uh, it's different per county. It's different per state. So I can only speak for mine, but I imagine a lot of states are similar. At least where I live, you get paid to do it. Um, and also, there's a, you know, there's state law in many places where you're not required to use paid time off to do it. So you can take off of work and not use a vacation day. Um, but again, it depends on your state. Um, it's worth checking, though. Um, but yeah, it was, it was nice. It was nice also to be exposed to people who live, you know, in my general neighborhoods and community. And uh, I don't know, it just gives, gives you a more realistic view of the people that you're that you're living around, as opposed to online politics, which tend to be nightmarish. Um, and again, like federal level stuff, which tends to just be miserable and depressing. Anyway, what's going on on the screen? I just wanted, I guess I figured I could use this as an opportunity to proselytize uh, a little bit to do some, you know, local volunteer work, local um, getting involved at like a local politics level. It's way less miserable than your, your federal level. You know, if you care about like, oh man, traffic's bad around me and stuff like that. How do you think that gets fixed? It's those people, it's the people that go to your local county meetings and stuff. You know, you could go and learn about that stuff and hear about what's getting done. Anyway, like I said, what's going on on the screen? The Avengers are working out and there's no detection. So I've just been sending these guys out when the Zerg are gathering up and it's been fine. We're tracking multiple flying entities heading for our next point. But speak of the devil, so what Synergy did here was he made uh, the Mutalisks detect. Which I think is kind of a, it's a nice happy medium, because fe there, there are, M Mutalisks are pretty plentiful on this map. And uh, it makes it so you can't completely steamroll it with cloaked units. There had to be some enemy detection, and normally on this mission there is none. But you also don't have access to anything that is completely invisible. I mean, I guess you could technically burrow units, but then they, they can't do anything. And swarm hosts only root, they don't fully burrow at this point. Um, you, you couldn't get burrow yet for swarm hosts in the evolution pit. But like, you can burrow drones and zerglings and stuff, and they can't be seen, but they also are then worthless. They can't do anything. So, um, to compensate, because we have our cloaked warriors now, Synergy went ahead and added those mutalisks that can see, but that's not going to stop us. We're going crazy with those Avengers, and it's the right choice. There's the Tyrannosaur. I don't understand how this is possible, but my scanners are detecting high solarite concentrations in the native beasts here. Teleport successful. And um, I think this, yeah, I just right clicked with almost all of my Avengers. And I know that Tyrannosaur does splash damage to ground and air, but the reason I took the Avengers was specifically. This door is impassable. We must find a way around. I don't know what he's commenting on with the. Oh, I think he's commenting on the, you know, we have to figure out how to get through the warring Zerg, but. The Tyrannosaur does some Mondo damage, but again, then the Avengers get warped back to full health, and we only had to do one run because we had enough of them, and they're going to kill it. And our reward is three Arbiters, which is fine. A little weird, but fine. I don't know if the idea is what you get for that. Like, it's it's the implication is that we're going to be getting the Assault flyers or ship assault ships is that the category of, of units that's like the next thing we're probably going to get after supreme just using using solar lands we're actually stockpiling a decent amount of solar energy and then we use uh release interceptors <laughs> which is uh, a replacement for the locusts uh, i like those little guys so those are useful they get distracted they'll only shoot things that can hit them first the keystone's energy matrix has reached the halfway point we must hold on. And I spread out the Arbiters a little bit. And we're just building a lot of, of cannons and then have the Avengers sit in front of the cannons. And there's really not much more to this mission. This is one of those missions I always found kind of easy from the Zerg perspective. And this isn't too bad as Protoss, so long as you put some thought into what units you, you're picking. Specifically, again, at the Cloaked Warrior level. Um, but I've also, I remember, like, when I made my campaign collection playthrough of the base game, um, there were a few comments of people saying how they always found this mission really hard. So I don't know if 
this is one of those for me that I inexplicably find easier and most people find a little more challenging relative to the other missions. Oh, Jay Bruno, there, it's all easy. Look, it's not, a, I'm saying relative to the other missions. I think maybe most people find this one a little harder and I find it, excuse me, easier. Um, or maybe it's vice versa, maybe it's vice versa. Maybe those specific commenters are the people that, uh, that find it harder while everyone else finds it about as difficult as I do. Anyway, Gabe Bruno focusing on his SimCity down there. As you saw, I was, you know, being specific about my tiles. Uh, those Guardians are coming in. I'm not sure, if, do Primal Guardians in the base game have this range? I, I feel like they normally can't shoot that far, but it does keep you on your toes here and you have to use Monoliths, of which I have none, but don't worry about it. Um, I think that was a wake-up call where I'm like, I need to start making more Phoenix. Which, I don't know if Corsairs do any better versus Guardians or not. Um, but the Phoenix are going to be fine. And the double lift kept us alive through the first couple waves where things got a little dicey. But our income is so, it's popped off. So we got nothing to worry about. We start fortifying the rocks. Don't let the probe get stuck. I guess one more note on the election work stuff. Um, maybe I'm going to regret bringing this up. Um, <laughs> just based on some folks in the comments, but we'll see. Um, if you're someone who doubts the veracity and transparency of our elections, um, I feel like you of all people should do the, do the, the long day, the 16 to 17 hour day, like I did, right? Because I did it, I'm allowed to now be sanctimonious about it. I can do it. I can be, I can be preachy about it because I, I suffered through it. And I would still recommend people do it, especially if you're someone who, I know it's a lot of people, they, they may get a little doubtful of how, you know, the, being able to trust our elections, but they actually don't, act, they don't, they don't actually know how they work. Um, I, I can only speak from the U.S. perspective, but, you know, if you live somewhere where you have the luxury of having elections that matter, then, then uh, yeah, give, you know, look into maybe what you need to do to, 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 to be able to work those days. Um, now, to be fair, if you were one of those people um, that I'm rec recommending this to who is like, thinks it's all a conspiracy, I wouldn't want to work a 16 to 17 hour day with you. That sounds like it would be miserable. But you of all people probably should be the one to do it. You know, we were there super late and that's because there's all sorts of certifications that need to be done. There's all sorts of checking and double checking that need to be done before we can send anything to the registrar. There's very specific and stringent rules that need to be followed. There's, it's required that there's representatives of both major parties. Uh, and that, that's why it takes so long. <laughs> that's why it takes so long. And sometimes it takes days and even weeks. It's because there's a lot of checking and rechecking. Uh, okay, anyway, that's enough talking about all of that. Um, I just want to be clear that I think it's it's some of the best work you can do that's it's not partisan. It's just it's just good work that, that sometimes uh, we, need, we need more folks to do. Um, I was waiting to use Solar Lance here because I wanted to keep those rocks up, but I was waiting for more units so that I could capitalize on, you know, all three Solar Lance charges. Um, and I, I think, well, we'll see at the end here, here in a couple minutes, but the, the enemies that come up through that ramp where the rocks are, are, it's probably the largest volume of enemies towards the end. I'm throwing down monoliths now, um, but this is where it's like, it's hard to squeeze them in and we don't want to path block too much stuff, but... You know, we've got enough cannons and shield batteries. We've got the Phoenix to kill the Guardians and the Locusts? No, the, um, oh gosh, what are they called? Vipers, that's it. The Guardians and the Vipers, and I guess the Mutas? Approaching maximum energy output. Victory is nearly upon us. Do not lose hope, brothers. And I probably could have used a solar there just to keep the rocks alive even the longer. We must hold! And I guess to tie together this whole riff narrative, <laughs> the banter narrative today, which is my age is catching up with me, having bad sleep or a really, really long work day uh, <laughs> affects the entire rest of my week substantially, not just a little bit. Um, I guess to tie it all together is maybe that's why when I realized my microphone wasn't recorded, I said, you know what, I'm not going to replay it. And even though it'll take the exact amount of time, it will be slightly less effort to just <laughs> just do the commentary and not replay it. 
so that I don't have to split my focus between playing and, and, and commentating. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, commentating's difficult. If you've never tried it, I mean, this would be weird for you to do. <laughs> so I can't imagine anyone would actually do this, because there's no reason to, but like, just if you try it, you might realize how difficult it is to split your focus, uh, to be able to effectively play, like actually play well, and make some sort of sense with your commentary. Uh, it took me a long time to get to get better at it. It takes everybody a long time to get better at it. I mean, the only way you get better at it is, is honestly just years of practice, but that's kind of my opinion on anything. If you put enough time into anything, if you put 30 minutes a day into literally anything, you'll be an expert. Uh, after a certain number of months, or maybe one year. I mean, that's a pretty, that's still a long commitment, but I would say it only, it would only take a couple months if you did something for 30 minutes every day. Um, and I, I mean, I don't record 30 minutes every day. I tend to record in, in small chunks. The point is, it's been consistent over a long period of time, and that's how you get a little better at it, but... It's still hard to retain focus on certain things. This is why... A stream of enemies will be upon us shortly. Stand firm, and we shall resist them. Thank you, Artanis, for letting us know. This is where they're going to be swarming us. But, like, I find recording kind of therapeutic. It's fun. It's my hobby. I make some money doing it. Um, but, yeah, it's just something you get you get better at it over time. But that's why, like, in Warcraft 3, I still miss tomes. Or, I mean, there's really not... There aren't, like, findables in StarCraft 2, but depending on the type of map you're playing, like during Map Arena, for example, depending on the type of... Uh, of map, it's it. If there's something that you need to be like hyper focused on to pay attention to to catch, like it, it, it's really easy basically to miss stuff. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Here. Long story short, it's already too long. Is uh, it's really easy to miss stuff, and it's especially easy to miss stuff when you're commentating too. <laughs> it's especially easy. Like, I cannot stress that enough. To you all, you're like it's on the screen. How can you not see it? Like, hey, look at the menu button in the bottom right. Can you notice anything in the top left of the screen while looking at the menu button? The answer is no. So basically, take that same, uh, you know, issue of not being able to focus on multiple things at a time visually, and then multiply it exponentially when you're trying to, you know, talk and make any sort of sense with what you're saying. <laughs> That's how they're like, it's right in front of your face, how do you not see it? Uh, it's actually very easy to not see it, <laughs> I guess is the answer to that. Anyway, so I, maybe I think, like, talking to myself can be a little therapeutic. I'm not sure exactly why, but I've always found it to be relaxing in, in some ways. Helps organize my thoughts a little bit. Calms the brain. I guess saying things aloud helps me focus better. Anyway, you could see, like, these giant streams units, they're all coming in on that bottom ramp, but we have enough Avengers that if I wanted to, I could put them on hold position on the ramp and then nothing could get through. Uh, we could have done that from the start, actually. I think in my original commentary, which is now lost forever because it wasn't actually recorded, I talk about how, well, I could have done this, but it'd be a little cheesy, and then it turns out, like, I'm accidentally blocking most of the units because we have enough Avengers anyway. So it all works out. But yeah, that's it, and cloaked units, man, the way to go. Any of the three options would work. And that's that. All right, thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.